would you feel if some fashionable clothing line started selling stylized pictures of Joseph Stalin? Doesn't get your blood going? How about Adolf Hitler? Well, that hasn't happened that I know about, but Urban Outfitters has a face of another murderer on it. Che Guevara with the word revolution. Well, joining me now from Los Angeles is Thor Halverson, who has a word about this. He's the president of the Human Rights Foundation. Hey, Thor, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Ezra. Now, you are the president of the Human Rights Foundation. Tell me a little bit about your foundation and why you're taking issue with this uh, Che Guevara chic. Well, uh, the Human Rights Foundation was created because of a, somewhat of a frustration with the human rights establishment. You know, human rights has become something that's all about the UN and it's all about people who speak a certain language that is very uh, lawyerly. And we think human rights should be accessible to everyone. And uh, somewhat frustrated with the politicization of human rights, where certain governments get criticized, but other governments for doing the exact same thing aren't criticized. And usually it divides along party lines. So we are sort of like equal opportunity, um, equal opportunity ball busters, if I can say that. <laughs> well, I like the fact that you did. Now, tell me uh, about your letter, your open letter to Urban Outfitters. It's been widely uh, covered, for example, on the Huffington Post, a popular liberal website. Uh, tell me the response you've had and, and what exactly you said to Urban Outfitters. Well, I, I wrote an open letter because, you know, you sometimes see so many people wearing those Che Guevara T-shirts. And uh, the irony is this communist ended up being the world's greatest T-shirt salesman. Yeah. And yet, People wear it without realizing what they're actually wearing and the symbol. I mean, Che Guevara was a very, very bad man. He was a psychopath who personally oversaw the execution of a thousand people in just one year. Mm. Uh, by point of comparison, Batista, the dictator he helped overthrow, had killed 700 people in a total of like nine years. So by comparison, he was no better than Batista. He was actually much worse. And I wrote a letter to Urban Outfitters uh, arguing, I mean, is this really someone you want to emblazon on a T-shirt? Is this really someone you want to put on a poster and, and um, try and make money off? And uh, many people shared it. 4,000 people shared it on Facebook. It was tweeted tens of thousands of times. And the next day, Urban Outfitters... Um, took the item off off their shelves. Oh, good. You know, I, I like uh, that it's way. It's no longer available. That's the way to do it. You know, I'm the kind of guy who believes in freedom of speech, even the freedom of people to be offensive. So the fact that you didn't rush to the courts to sue, you didn't go to a human rights commission, you just appealed to their better nature and you mobilized grassroots buyers. I'm, that's exactly how it ought to be done. Now, has Urban Outfitters contacted you directly? Did they say, uh, well, sorry, we, go ahead. Ezra, well, what you just said is exactly right. Well, I didn't say you should be banned from doing this. I didn't say you should be sued for offending people. I didn't say any of that. And my colleagues and I are very, very clear that they should have the freedom to put anyone they want on their T-shirts. But in a decent and free society, people say to each other, you know, I don't like what you just did. That offended me. And that person might say, I'm really sorry. Let's talk about it. Or they might say, I don't care. Yeah. But both are perfectly acceptable options in a free society. Yeah. And that's precisely what happened here. Now, we were in touch with, I, I tried to get in touch with the CEO to thank him for removing it. They also had, they also had for sale a couple of other Che Guevara items that are also no longer available. So, mm. I'm pleased I've had no contact with them, but what I'm yeah. hoping is that the letter, which is filled with facts, mm -hmm. it's filled with, with a chock full of information about Che Guevara and about Cuba, is used by others in similar campaigns. Because yeah. most of the time, people just get angry when they see something like this, and they call the company, and they use swear language, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're just, you know, as offensive, uh, and they're offended. Pe when people are offended, they, they sometimes act in an offensive manner. Now, I'm not talking about what's going on in the Middle East, which yeah. is totally unacceptable. That's not people being offended. That's people engaging in terroristic violence. Yeah. So... Um, I, I think in a free society, this is the way we should deal with things like this. You're so right. You know what? My personal observation is that most of the kids who wear these T-shirts have no clue at all who Che Guevara actually was and what he actually did. Maybe they've heard a mythical say, oh, he was a man of the people. He was a revolutionary in the best sense of that word. Maybe he was the George Washington of Latin America. I bet you that 90 percent of the kids plunking down the 20 bucks or 30 bucks for these shirts simply have no clue. What do you think? That's part of it. The yeah. other part is, of course, you know, Los Angeles, where I am right now, is devoted to romanticizing people like Che Guevara yeah. and turning him into some kind of heroic person and the motorcycle diaries. But yeah. if you actually look at those diaries, he write and you, you read what he writes. The man is quite clearly, clinically, very, very. Um, uh, he's 
He's, to call him a psychopath, I think, would be an accurate statement. He huh. talks about blood. He talks about how he yeah. gets aroused by killing people. He talks yeah. about how all he wants to do is hate. Jeez. So uh, it's uh, education's the name of the game here. Yeah. Well, listen, we've got a quote here from, let me just quote to you, a Che Guevara quote. To establish socialism, rivers of blood must flow. The victory of socialism is well worth millions of atomic Victims like that. That's just sort of weird. That sounds a little bit crazy, like you say, uh, megalomanic. Yeah. I don't know. I'm really glad you're doing what you're doing. I'm glad you're doing it with the power of moral suasion. You're not rioting. You're not going to court. You're appealing to the better instincts of your fellow Americans. I salute you, and I hope you'll come on the show because we need a nonpartisan human rights voice like yours. I'm glad to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me on your show. And you know, as far as nonpartisan goes. Our board includes victims of fascism, victims of communism, victims of all sorts of dictatorship, whether it's the Nazis or the Soviets. And that's the way it should be. Human rights for everyone. It's about, it's not about left or right. It's about right or wrong. Great way to end the segment. Thanks again, Thor.